Greetings to all. The scripture reading from which this week's point to ponder arises comes from the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew 16 verses 13 through 20, one of the scripture passages appointed for the 12th Sunday after Pentecost. The passage tells about a time in Caesarea Philippi when Jesus asks his disciples to tell him who people say that he is. The disciples have heard different opinions. Some people think he is John the Baptist, some think he is Elijah, and some think he might be Jeremiah or one of the other prophets. But then Jesus asks, who do you say that I am? And Peter nails it. He has come to understand that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God. As Jesus continues this chat with the disciples, he begins to speak of what we today would call the church. And one of the things Jesus has to say about this body of faithful followers is that they will need to realize that they have the power to either spiritually bind people or to set them free. I hear this not so much as a promise for a future gift, but as a statement of truth. Really a statement of truth about the power which resides in every human life. In the relationships we have with others, our actions and reactions, our words and deeds, our beliefs and powers, all exert a kind of personal power in the relationship, whether we realize we have that power or not. So I hear this passage as something of a caution, a caution to pay attention to how we use our power, both individually and as a community of faith. Which brings us to this week's point to ponder. Sometimes we have the power to set each other free. So a funny thing happened on my way to ponder the point. I got to Friday and I didn't have a guest. So as I began to think about that point, about how sometimes we have the power to set each other free, what I realized is that over this summer, as we've done this Points to Ponder series, that's exactly what I was hoping to do, was to use uh, my power to access YouTube, uh, to use my power as a vicar who needed to produce a sermon every week, to use that power to provide a space for people, just ordinary people, to tell their stories. And we are going to continue that as we go into September. But since I didn't have one guest today, I thought back over some of the videos that we have watched over the summer, the videos of Points to Ponder, and realized that in each one of these videos, at least part of the video spoke to somebody who had set somebody free by using the power they had within them. So for a little bit of fun and for a little bit of uh, some video to show you, since I didn't have a guest, let's look at some clips from videos over the last couple of months. St. Luke's inviting people to contribute video recordings of themselves reading the scriptures in different languages. By doing that, you affirm their identities as children of God, affirm their languages, some of which were systematically repressed by the state, historically speaking, and you, by sharing and watching, you affirm that these people are all part of the Christian family. And it was, it was just fabulous to spend every summer with my grandmother. And I ended up being sort of like her youngest daughter because I followed her everywhere she went. Not because I really wanted to follow my grandmother, <laughs> but... <laughs> But it was because I, I was very nervous and almost afraid of everything I saw. So, so she'll be like, come on, Musu, let's go. You need to stay close to me. So because I stayed close to my grandmother, I learned how she operated, how she dealt with people, and, and some of her philosophies in life. Primarily her faith in God. 
my grandmother was very steadfast in her faith in God. Is that they put together skits uh, so the kids, uh, the, the younger kids, could kind of relate to it better. Uh, and they would talk about, well, you know, again, in, in the Bulldog Project, they're freshmen through seniors. So it's not just the, the upper class kids, it's the freshmen through seniors. And they would talk about, we were just where you were a year or two or three ago. And so we kind of understand what you're going through so they, so they could relate better. And, and so they, uh, they went there and they did the skits. And they give the, ch the kid kids an opportunity to start reaching down. And they taught them. They put the groups together in different schools, in the middle schools. And so those middle school kids now are going to the elementary schools and doing presentations on anti-bullying and those kind of things. Um, I guess in my ministry, my ministry started out with um, – I guess I call it a prayer, in-home prayer group. Mm -hmm. um, and I started it with a lady who kept, who would keep people in her home. They mm -hmm. wouldn't send them to nursing homes. She would actually keep these little people in her home. And so most of them never got to go to church because she couldn't take them all to church at one time. And so some of them, parent, people would come by and pick them up on Sundays, and some of them would not. So I asked her if I could come into her house and, and minister to these people. Mm -hmm. The first time I went, I asked them all to tell me their special song they, they had. And so one lady said, I, don't, I can't remember a special song. And these, these were like little ladies that was over 60. And so by the, end of, by the end of our session, she came up with a song that she loved. And that song was Have a Little Talk with Jesus. <laughs> and it showed me then. I started singing that song. Mm -hmm. And even though she couldn't remember it at first, it all just flooded back in her head. And she got so happy singing that song. So to me, that is when if you see a tumbleweed out in the desert, that was a tumbleweed to me. Mm -hmm. Tumbleweed had gotten lost from everybody. It had gotten lost with society. And she was not into what was going on with church. But once we started singing that song, Have a Little Talk with Jesus, it was like she came back to life. And her, and every time I would go minister to them, she would always want us to sing that song for her. So what sometimes God can take the tumbleweeds that we kind of throw out and he can bring them back and revive them. It's just, it just takes somebody with a little patience and a little time to do it. 